Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back to some more bite-sized business advice. We got an episode today for the leaders out there, and we're going to we're gonna maybe shake you up a little bit and get inside your head, but in a good way. Don't worry. We're also going to tell you how to fix what we talk about. So you may be juggling a couple of two, three hundred thousand things at the same time. Yeah, we're going to tell you how to fix it. I have an amazing guest lined up, Liz Weber, and we're going to unpack all of this and see if we can fix your business a little bit in like 20 minutes. So buckle up, pay attention. Liz, welcome to the show. Thanks, Brandon. I'm so happy to be here talking with you today. I'm excited. So we're talking leadership. Leadership is a big topic, but we're going to talk about, you know, how do we how do we become more effective leaders? How do we stop focusing on a million things because then nothing gets done and actually move our companies forward? So um, I'd love to hear a little bit about your history and what what got you to this point first before we dive in. So educate me on that. Sure. So in a nutshell, Brandon, what I do first is I work with organizations in three main areas, helping them predominantly to focus on the right things at the right time to get the right impact. And, and how I do that specifically is, number one, I help them with facilitating their strategic planning initiatives. So laying out the roadmap with them very succinctly and clearly as to what they need to do over the next one, two, three, four, five plus years to get to where they want to be with their organization. As part of those conversations, and invariably we talk about how does your company need to be reorganized? Do you need to expand your portfolio of services? Are you going to contract it? Are you going to move into a different location? So we also get into reorganization, but specifically, I work with my clients on understanding what types of people and talent are you going to need in your leadership pipeline or your talent pipeline to help you do what your company needs to do as you implement your strategic plan? So we get into succession and workforce planning conversations. And then the third thing that I spend a lot of time doing is working as an executive coach and business advisor with my clients who are business leaders, business owners, a C-suite or boards of directors to help them identify what they need to focus on next to, again, have the right impact. And, and my area is really helping them as leaders figure out how do they leverage the talent they're responsible for. So as leaders, they're getting most out of the people that work for them, whether it's the next level down leader all the way down to the front line. So that's what I do. And how I got here was when I first started my company, I started as a lot of consultants do quite often is a training company and focus on, you know, basically training any topic on anything relative to management and supervision. So I, I started training on stress and time management and across the board to project management and process reengineering. And through that process, clients started asking me then if I would help them with their strategic planning. And I didn't know how to do it, but I just kind of figured out here's what I would want to have happen because I had, I had trained for so many years, Brandon. And, you know, if you've ever been in the training room as a trainer, um, particularly if you're training mid-level managers, you hear from them the issues that their team members are dealing with. And you also hear from them the pressure they're getting from above. So you've got this insight into the poor manager is stuck in the middle. And then I was also training the more senior level people. So I was hearing from them the pressure they're getting from the board and also the issues they're getting from their mid-level managers. And I had this insight that neither group of managers or leaders had. And when I would start sharing with them from an advisory capacity or hey here's something for you to think about capacity they pretty soon started asking me to basically facilitate the strategic planning retreats but then also coaching them because i was <clears throat> becoming a trusted resource in the training room because i trained so many different topics that i could help them piece together number one the content from the different training programs so it wasn't a hodgepodge of information 
But number two, I really started knowing the people within the organization and I could help them figure out ways to communicate more effectively with their direct reports or their, their managers up a level or two to get the right impact they were looking for. And, and that's really kind of how everything started. Yeah, that, that's an interesting background too, and a unique perspective because I'm sure everybody's, everybody listening has been in somewhat of a similar position, right? It, whether you've worked for another company, it's your own company, you have that sort of pull from both ends. If it's on the smaller side, even, even small business owners, they feel pulled by their clients and then by their employees. So there's always these two forces that we're battling. And the, the topic for today's episode is leadership isn't a title, it's a mindset. So help me Help me unpack that. When, when do we start to, what is the mindset you help your clients with to to start this transition? Because I, I would assume it has to start from within first before we start to see those those changes play out. Yeah, that's that's correct. And, and you know, leadership isn't a title, it's a mindset. It's it's really not, not a overcomplicating leadership. And, and from my perspective, leadership is simply someone looking to you to take the lead on something, whatever it is, you know, is it, is it planning the company picnic or is it planning the, the next major initiative? Just take charge and, and move it forward. And, and tying into that, as you were, as you were kind of teeing up this question, what I thought of Brandon very quickly are just a couple of clients I've worked with just yesterday and the day before, because one of the things that I, I find with mid-level managers, when they're struggling to figure out how do I be viewed as a more senior leader, potential uh, type leader? Invariably, the thing that I spend time helping them understand is they need to learn to communicate differently. Because when they're communicating quite often, they're using way too many words with their executive staff. Um, they're taking way too long to get to the point. They're providing way too much background. And they need to understand that executives' brains are basically like, tick, 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 tick. there's a clock running in their heads because they have to make so many flipping decisions in the course of a day. They just need enough information for the most part to make a good gut feel decision. And, and they are trusting you in your role to be able to tee up to them a couple options to choose from. And then if they ask for it, background to help them solidify a better decision. And so that's the big piece from a mid-level looking up on, you know, how to become a leader with a mindset, even when you don't have the title. On the flip side though, just yesterday I was working with an executive team and the director of construction was was saying, you know, I've, I've got this, this project manager and, and she's brilliant. She knows everything, but she doesn't have the confidence to, to run the project meetings. And she looks to me to do that. And he said, I've told you, I trust you, just go run the meeting. And I said, I understand that and that's admirable but you've just told her, go do it, and you didn't teach her how to do it. If she's not confident, she doesn't know how, and she doesn't believe she knows how to do it well. I said, so I'm just gonna toss a suggestion for you, and Brandon, this might be something that, that your listeners can, can appreciate also. So instead of just saying, Brandon, I trust you, go do it, I would say, hey, Brandon, if I weren't here, what would you do And doing nothing is not an option? And, and what that causes you to do then, Brandon, and I'm not being nasty when I say it because the tone of my voice is gonna be, I'm just generally asking you a question because what I want you to do is I want you to stop and think and go, oh crud, if she's not here to actually take this meeting and I have to, what am I gonna do? And what you're probably gonna do is you're probably gonna sit and you're gonna run through your notes like crazy and get really well prepared then I then you're probably going to think about all the people who are going to be in that meeting or on that call and knowing them as you do because you're the project manager which one is going to be a dork which one is going to ask you 9300 question which one is not going to say anything which one is going to probably say a zinger which one is going to be confused 
and, and anticipate all the potential issues and then prepare going in to mitigate those issues through your presentation. And so by taking that, what was that? Maybe a minute and a half, two minutes. I just explained that to you. In that two minute time frame, you've now given that person an opportunity in a coaching session that they didn't even realize was a coaching session. And you've also basically told them, I have confidence in you. And by how you just walk me through what you would do to prepare for that. And if they didn't know those things, and then if you coach them on what to do, prepare, you've now helped them gain the skills to do this going forward. And they will know that you expect them to do it going forward and you'll help them, but you've just helped them gain the skills to gain the confidence to do it going forward. So, you know, back to the point of, of that is, you know, leadership is a mindset, it's, it's not a position, but it's also helping people understand in the position they're in, how can they be a better leader? And how can they act like a leader in the position they're in, even if they don't think they are, even if they're dealing with imposter syndrome? Yeah, that, that's a fantastic approach. And you see the best companies in the world, the best cultures in the world have, have this stuff at work, they, they coach their people from top to bottom. It's not just the leadership team, the executive C-suite who get the, the coaching and consulting. It's an organizational structure. It's the culture of the organization. I'm curious though, because in today's marketplace and with everything going on and cultures and all that stuff, I mean, leaders have a lot to deal with. And how do we, how do we start to have this conversation and make this part of our culture the first thing I'm thinking of is all over social media, you see the people immediately who are saying, if you ask me to do one more thing, I better get one more dollar like that, that mentality, right? Whereas this, this comes from a place of, I want to make you better as in, not only an employee of this company, but as a human being, like mm -hmm. these are life skills that you should have to solve a problem. So how do we navigate that? That's, that's such a great question. Actually, that came up in the conversation yesterday with the, with the group that I was working with. And here's the reality of the situation. Okay, let's, let's look at the example I shared with you. This, this team member is a senior project manager, technically brilliant, can do everything. But Brandon, in reality, the additional responsibility of anyone who is a senior project manager on a construction project is going to be communicating and running meetings on the project. That is part of the job. So do you get paid more money for it? No, because I'll be very blunt. You're already being paid for it and you're not doing it. So it's incumbent upon the manager, your manager then, if you're the senior project manager, it's incumbent upon your manager to help you gain the skills to, this is a Liz Weber rule, to independently, competently, and confidently do the job you're being paid to do already. And this particular person isn't capable of doing it all yet. And so it's incumbent upon her manager to help her gain those skills to do it so that she's even more effective in the role she has now. And she's even more marketable whenever she chooses to leave that organization and go elsewhere. We had that exact conversation yesterday when I was working with the executive team. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, really, when you explain it that way, it's a failure of leadership to it develop is. their people and to yeah. hold them to a high standard, really. It is. And in the conversation we had for for now for the senior managers thought going, but I don't have time for this. It took me again, what, a minute and a half, two minutes to have that sample conversation with you versus how long would he have sat in a project meeting speaking on her behalf when it's her project to run. He's gonna either give up at least an hour of continuing to not allow her to develop the skills that she should have given the position she holds, or is he gonna take, let's say three minutes now and start coaching her to develop her skills? I think the math is kind of speaks for itself. I was gonna say three minutes versus 90. I'm yeah. not a math whiz, but that's uh, pretty good. <laughs> it seems yeah. pretty good deal to me. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and the hard thing is, is, and like he said, even yesterday, and I, and I give this senior manager credit, he said, so really what you're telling me is I need to retrain myself. And I just looked at him and he, yeah, that's, 
we're, you know, we're the ones that do this. We're, we're the ones that, that have the teams we have because of how we've trained them or we have it. And so it's, it's up to us as leaders in, you know, whatever hierarchy we're in, if we're responsible for others, it's our responsibility to ensure, Liz Weber rule, to ensure they're able to independently and competently do the jobs they're being paid to do. Yeah, and it seems like common sense, but unfortunately, because of like everything you just said, it's really not. We get in these ruts, and what what comes to mind when you explain that is the the conversation of innovation. We mm -hmm. we think of this is like product innovation or service innovation, but really it's it's cultural innovation. How are we continuing to up level ourselves? So when you're when you're working with organizations and leaders, is this a conversation you're uh, is this a common conversation that you're having senior leadership or whatever level you're working at constantly reviewing how they're leading their company and really leading themselves and performing their job duties all, all the time yes all the time and and here's here's the reason why and and i i have to catch myself with this as well for the best of intentions we get in our team members way and for instance, I'm going to go back to the same example we were talking about yesterday. It's It would be very easy for this senior manager with the best of intentions to keep things going, to keep this project on track. It's a $15 million construction project. We have to keep it on track. It's very easy for the best of intentions for him to just jump in and run that meeting because you don't want it to fail. You don't want the client to be upset. You don't want your team member to fail. So he's just going to do it. So for the best of intentions, we as leaders and managers inadvertently jump in and take over trying to help our team members succeed. But what happens if when we continually jump in and take over, what are we teaching them? We're teaching them if they so choose, don't worry, Liz will always jump in and just take over for you. Or if you have an employee who doesn't want to do the work, you teach them, <laughs> just stall long enough and she's going to jump in and take over. Or if you have a really great team member who wants to grow, who wants to develop, who wants to engage, what I'm teaching them is I can't do anything because she's going to jump in and take over. So we have to be very cognizant of what we're doing as leaders. And I have this conversation all the time is, and this is why when I say I help them focus on the right things at the right time to get the right impact, is what are you doing right now? And what message is that sending your team right now? As an example, I, one of my clients that I'm working with on, on strategic planning, their plan is now in the rollout phase. Planning is hard, implementation is crucial, and it's, and it's, it's painful. And one thing that happens, as you and your listeners probably know, is it's very easy for strategic plans to go off tra track or just die because life gets in the way. And so one of the things that I do with my clients is after the plan is approved, at least for the first year after, I touch base with them every quarter to say, okay, how's it going? What needs to be tweaked? What needs to be changed? What needs to be updated? To teach them how to implement the plan and monitor the plan. A month ago, a client reached out and said, look, the director is thinking maybe we're going to cancel this third quarter update because we're just so busy right now and everybody's kind of burnt out. Morale is really low, which I can understand because they've got some monstrous initiatives they're dealing with. And I said, I'm willing to talk to him directly, but this is this person's role. I said, I would encourage you to, him to understand that if you um, cancel this one, what you're showing your team is that when things get tough, you're going to cancel this. And what you've been criticized in the past is you've never implemented the plans and you never followed through. So by canceling, you're now giving them the opportunity to go, see, told you, they, they're doing the same thing again. Instead of canceling, why don't we just alter the format of the update and the review? We'll do a very quick update, but then we're going to spend the rest of the time actually tapping the brakes and say, let's give you time in this dedicated work session together. We're going to work on X, Y, Z, part of part of one of their initiatives. And we're going to give you hands on time to debate this and work with others so we can continue to move this thing forward. Not canceling, we're adjusting. 
And so it's, it's that kind of um, messaging and communication of thinking as a leader, what impact on your team is a decision you're gonna make, what's it gonna have on them? How's it gonna impact them? Because what, what I'm focusing on with my clients is keeping their team members moving forward and, and being engaged, wanting to be a part of the culture, understanding that their job matters and how important it is that they fit in and how they behave and how they're welcomed and the environment that they're in, how it fits in. Um, so getting all those things uh, front of mind so that we don't have an unintended consequence with, with an action. Mm. That's, that's powerful. What I'm, what I'm really hearing you say is if we're to think about this in our own, the, or, the context of our own organizations is the, the seeds you sow now, you will reap forever for as long mm. as you continue. sow them. meaning though, that the actions you do now, the excuses you let sell out slide, you will see the fruits of that in the future, good or bad. But also if you're not happy with where your organization's at now, look in the past and see what you've tolerated. What what are those things you've put into place that are now bearing fruit, so to speak? And that's how you can begin to change the organization. So leadership is hard. It's That's no secret. That's why people like Liz are here to unpack it. And Liz, I mean, I, I feel like I could talk to you about this for eight days and there's so many different directions we could take, mm -hmm. um, but we don't have that kind of time. So maybe we'll have you back. I would, I would love the opportunity to in, interview you again, but you do have for the listeners um, a leadership assessment, which I've put on the screen and uh, it'll also be on the show notes down below, wherever you're watching or listening. But um, tell me about this assessment real quick before I let sure. you know. Sure, sure. It's based on my leadership model, the five stages of focused leadership development. It's a free quiz. You take the quiz, it's just 10 short answers and it will tell you which of my stage, uh, five stages of leadership you are currently operating in and what you might need to do to move to the next stage to better support your team. That's fantastic. Liz, thank you so much for being here. I am I am so glad to be here, Brandon. It was fun just talking with you. Thank you. I do have one last question, though, before I let you go. And this is how I love to end this episode. You are watching me. You can see behind me. For those of you watching the episodes, you can see behind me, too. But there is a giant upside down question mark on the wall. And it's lit up because I like to be a little bit obnoxious. But it's not the only reason. It's because we believe that powerful questions get you powerful answers in the growing of your business. We always want you moving your business forward when you're listening to this show. So Liz, the question for you is for a question in return. I know you gave us 10 questions on your leadership quiz. So that's, thank you. I'm asking for an 11th question now. From this episode, from everything we talked about, what is a question that the listener can walk away with asking themselves to get a better answer of how they can take their leadership to the next level and help move their business forward? So the question would be, um, if you are frustrated with your team because of the way they are performing or not, how have you addressed it specifically with them so they know you want a different outcome? Liz, I don't want to think about myself. Fantastic question, Liz. Thank you again for being here. I love that question. And for you listening, watching, wherever you are, first things first, ponder that question. Think about it. Go take the, the quiz that Liz has for us um, and subscribe. We want to have you back on another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. If this is your first, welcome into the madness. If this is your 157th, I can't believe how many episodes we've done so far. Welcome back. And we'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Thanks for being here.